Some of the things that would be handy to have right there when you start to ink in are the white gel pen, your thin um, 0 0.01 pigment liner, your 0 0.07, I don't have those so I'm using these, they're about the same, and your Pantel sign pen. Something that's helpful too is to have a little credit card or some sort of stiff card about this size to make your lines. It's easier to wield than a set square. And your circle templates, your ellipse templates, have, I think you have one with many different degrees. That's going to be helpful. And your flexi curve. This is going to be extremely helpful. Now, what I want you to think of, all, first of all, is where is the focus? And our focus in this drawing are the renovations that we've made with the banquette and the table. And some chose different stools as well, so you can think of those as the focus. So it's the island area. There's also been the addition of the wine refrigerator and this cabinetry above, but it's secondary to the major focus. So with your Pentel sign pen and your little card, you can start to uh, put in some some of the lines that are going to be of most importance to us. Now remember to cross your corners. That makes it look a little bit more professional. You're thinking a little more professional. And you see now why it was so important for you to get this right, to get the line drawing, your pencil line drawing, absolutely right. Because now that I'm uh, drawing in these lines, I'm relying on what's there in front of me to give me accuracy. I'm not using the vanishing point. That's risky. It's very risky, but it's worth it to be able to wield this with more, with a little more uh, fluidity, not having to stop. Now, you see these inside lines are thinner. That's more your 0.7, and that one's not quite right, so I'm going to just fix that. And the inside, this is inside, so that's 0.7. This is 0.7. So obviously, this is a, a, a faint copy of my, my original. This seems not important. This is, we know that's cushion. You've got to give your viewer some credit for being able to fill in the blanks. They can, they know what this is. So you just have to help them along a little bit with your, with your um, 0.07 because they know. And now for your hatching. Hatching is best done just with your skinniest, skinniest pen. And now that I've got a line to separate these two areas, I don't hatch them separately. I hatch them together. Now, I have a little difficulty seeing what I'm doing here because I'm, the, the camera is right in front of me, so I am having a little difficulty getting this right. But this is all scritchy, so don't be scritchy. Do really deliberate um, and put everything down. That's another thing I'm doing wrong here. I should set all these pens down and do one thing at a time. So always trying to keep these videos brief. I sometimes take shortcuts and that's not the way to do this. So you do those very carefully. Now we're inside again. So we don't need to make this very strong. We need to make it look soft, but we don't need to make it look soft. And not everybody's going to have a cushion like this, but you might have a soft, soft seating. So it's very important to have this line come in. And these curved lines show thickness, thickness to the weight of whatever it is you're drawing. Now we're back to the sign pen again to get into these the areas that are the silhouette, what silhouettes this object, what makes it look like what it is from a distance, when people see it from a distance. There's this now, you might argue that it is in the distance, so why are we outlining it? But it helps to complete this thought, the weight of it sitting on the floor 
So I think that merits it's the other leg, so that merits a little bit of attention too. And so does the top of it. And you're crossing your corners, so does this side of it. Now, this with its all of its ellipses, one of the best ways to find that ellipse is with your flexi curve. And what you're focusing on here is getting it to be round, but not pointy at the edges. So something that could help would be to okay, get it all lined up come from the outside in. And when you do that, um, leave a little gap in the center because that makes it feel as if the light is hitting it here. And then leave room for this, for this to be rounded out. It's got to be round out there. And if it, you get a little thing like that and it bothers you, you can clean it up with your white gel pen. The thing about that, though, is that because you've left all of these cross corners, or most of them are cross corners, that won't be a problem. It will just look like an extension, like a cross corner. So you just have to get used to doing it. And of course, I'm doing this very slowly. But normally when you do it, you when you get really good at using that little credit card, you can just go zip, zip, zip all the way along. Whoop. I'm in the way of the camera here. So, okay, so that went up too high, but that's all right. I can just put my teapot. Now, you would argue that this now should not be that important, and it shouldn't. Establish a little direction for this. And then when you put your hatching in and you put these little items in, they have a uh, continuity. They look as if they belong together. So now this is a little tiny line and you would maybe not need the credit card for that, but you could decide what you want to do. I don't have got to decide what to do about this. So see, I can make a thick line by doing many lines. If I have a mistake like that, I can fix it. And with my hatching going on above it, I shouldn't have too much trouble making this look all right. I might switch to this pen, pen for the hatching. The other one is a little bit too different. And my hatching is already in here, so this is going to look too heavy. But you, you use a, the thinnest line you can because that will make it look better. But what I'm, that's messy, but what I'm trying to show you is that you have that little you know, little curve, and then you can hatch up to it. And it shows the light hitting that area, and then it drops off. So when you rendered, if we were rendering, if you rendered over top, it would, it would look correct. It would look fine. Everything would be consistent. Okay, so that needed more finessing than I was able to do there, but and we'll look at this from here. The other way to do this is just try to fit it. I think this is actually a better solution. Try to fit half of it, because that's all I'm drawing is half of it. And then fit the other half around the other way. But what it will give you is a solid, unhesitating line. If it's off a little bit, you'll be forgiven because it's a solid, unhesitating line. Whereas if you were tickling it with three or four little hesitant lines, it wouldn't work. And that's better than the one up there, that's for sure. And I can now put this, I should be using my credit card. There. And I'm crossing my corners. That's the nice thing about the cross corners, as I mentioned. They can, um, they make it just that little bit more snazzy. So when you do make a mistake, 
going a little too far or something like that. It's not so, it's not so important. Try not to make them curvy like that one, but so you see, this is quite a deliberate thing that you're doing here. Okay, and this is the island, so we're going with the sign pen for this as well. Because that's, that's a major feature. They want to make this part of... Uh, this is part of what they really like about their kitchen. And this is part of the silhouette of my table, so I can use this. Now, if I've got a skinnier line in here, I can put that in with my lighter pen. Okay, and these down here, this is where your circle template comes in. You might find something that will be just great under there. Let me see. That looks pretty good. And this is again part of the silhouette, so I could go ahead and use this. And again, I'm coming from the outside and going in. 